Yeah, they'll take on UCLA out in California next Saturday. You know, in tonight's program, we're going to take a look at some of the changes that college football fans might not be aware of here in the area. Also, some of the unsung heroes at both OU and OSU. You know, as fans and media, we get to enjoy the games themselves on Saturday, but the preparation for the players and coaches goes back several weeks. For the players, it started in the heat of mid-August. Ed Murray takes a look at a typical day for one of those players. By the time the first horn sounds at 9 a.m. to begin the three-hour morning practice, junior center Pete Surratt has already spent over an hour in meetings and other practice preparations. After stretching, the players will split up and spend about the first two hours in individual position drills. Look it in, rip both hands, knock it out of there, sit. Pete, Pete. Good, Pete. Always looking for great effort, but taking the proper steps and the aiming points, making sure they're on the right assignments, and and I think that's the first key is knowing who to block and getting better at blocking it. Under a sun that grows hotter by the minute, Surrett and the others are expected to go all out. A water bottle is never far away though, and neither is head coach Pat Jones. I'm trying to check out and see who's uh, who's paying attention, who's not paying attention, who's responding. Uh, you get in a competitive situation, basically who wins. When they're out there and even when it is a test of willpower in the heat, um, you know, who's trying to give in to it? Players are in shorts and shoulder pads in the morning practice, but that doesn't stop things from getting a little more physical in the last hour or so. In this drill, Surratt loses a battle with starting tackle Stacy Satterwhite. Yeah, you get frustrated, especially uh, especially now. Uh, things start getting down to the end, and, and you don't do as well. Uh, it can get real frustrating. And really, the thing you need to do is get back in there and go again, more than just getting upset. This is where we become better for all clubs. Uh, You've got to be able to play after you practice for a long time. You've got to be able to play in the heat. Uh, things are getting hard now, yeah. But this is where you make yourself a good ball club right here. Now comes the best part of the first practice, some showers. Showers, it's over. <laughs> it's time to go home and get some lunch. The air-conditioned comfort of home is a welcome relief. Surratt has about 30 minutes to kill before lunch. And the recreation of choice on the team is Nintendo. Surratt goes for Super Mario Brothers this day. But down the hall, guard Brian Bobo is catching 12 pounds, 9 ounces of bass, while tackle Matt Jose fires a 5 under in golf. We kind of each year after two days were over, kind of put the Nintendo away because it was easy to get carried away in this game. Lunch is served in the dorm cafeteria the players will share with other students once they report for classes. The menu is specifically prepared for a variety of diets. Once he's had his fill and a little something to drink, Surratt will get some sleep. The afternoon workout is just a few hours away. Uh, right now is where we go in. We'll look over the film from the morning practice and uh, clean anything up that we need to as far as assignments and play calling and, and all that stuff. It takes about an hour each day. Just some little part of the mental process of football. The meeting breaks up about 4.15. Practice begins at 5.30. In that time, Surrett must get taped and into full armor for a three-hour, 20-minute full pad workout. The first half of the evening practice is pretty much a carbon copy of the morning, except it's a little more physical, and this time, Surrett gets the best of Satterwhite. The second half of practice is spent on team drills, where all the day's teachings come together. There we go. I think we're going to But if you think practice is over, guess again. These are called conditioning drills, or gassers, and they're run against the clock. Run less than full speed, and run them again. But at last, practice ends. Time to enjoy some watermelon. Unless you're Pete Surratt and the offensive lineman. It's their turn for a little post-practice weight work. Pete and his line mates finally got their watermelon. Then after a shower, was back to the dorm for dinner, back here to the football field for one last meeting, and finally it was time for a good night's sleep, bringing to an end a long, hot day. But I tell you what, two days will be a distant memory once the team walks down this ramp on Saturday. Bill? Thanks, Ed, and I can honestly say I'm glad I'm not one of those players. Still to come on the program,